So uh, I am coming at you guys from my living room apartment, which I'm very happy to be here right now because 20 minutes ago I was locked out of my apartment, sitting on my couch currently, and uh, I am a Middle Eastern male with dark brown hair, and I'm wearing a green polo, and I identify as a blind person. And my name is Jonathan Novick. I'm also happy to be coming for... Uh to you live from my bedroom. Uh, I did not have a similar experience to Wale, uh, but I, uh, I'm here. Uh, I am a Caucasian little person uh, and I am wearing a blue and black checkered shirt. All right. All right, and we usually, you know, we're doing this in Luke because we're not really using any visual aids today, but uh, we encourage you guys, if you ever use slides or anything like that, to read the slide titles and describe the images in your slides. I heard a message, somebody's having a black screen, they're not seeing the video. Yeah, somebody asked, is there supposed to be video? I only see a black screen. Uh, Wale and I both have our video turned on, but as Wale mentioned, we will not be sharing any specific relevant visuals as far as, uh, you know, um, a way of troubleshooting that, if you do wanna see us and other uh, speakers who will be sharing their video. You should be able to, it might be in your display settings. Uh, uh, Sean just messaged, I can see the video, but as an alternative, maybe try the YouTube live stream. Um, it should be in your view preferences, perhaps, if you go up into view, um, show, manage participants. Uh, there could be some options as well on the top of the screen that say things like speaker view, things like that. And uh, this person just messaged in, you, uh, in the chat, works in YouTube, so I think we're good. Okay, great. So um, with that access check uh, being said, uh, Wally, anything else you wanna add before we get started? No, let's go, let's get it going. Okay, great. So my name is Jonathan Novick and I'm the outreach manager for the mayor's office for people with disabilities. And uh, basically our office uh, during what we call blue skies, which is, you know, when there's not an emergency situation, our main goal is to work to ensure that people with disabilities have equal access to everything New York City has to offer. This is transportation, housing, benefits, employment. And um, although right now we are in the middle of a you know, pandemic of COVID-19 uh, response and action, this mission does not change. And in everything that we have been doing, we are continuing to um, do everything we can to ensure that people with disabilities are included in communication, included in response, and included in resources. So today what we're gonna be discussing is all of these things from the beginning, um, precautions that we took working both internally and with our city agency and public partners to ensure that people with disabilities were included every step of the way, um, what we've been learning and what we continue to learn. And uh, we will be uh, alternating back and forth, speaking on the individual things that we've been working with in a sequential order of how we've been rolling them out. And as Thomas mentioned, if you do have questions, please for now either enter them in the chat or hold on to them. And we'll be having a question and answer session at the end. So as I mentioned, MOPD, we work to ensure equal access to everything New York City has to offer. And I'll say this again at the end, but if you are a person with a disability or if you don't know how to get in contact with our office, you can call us anytime at, well, not anytime, uh, 9 to 5 from two, at 212-788-2830. That's 212-788-2830. We also have a video phone conferencing line called ASL Direct. It's a program where a person who is deaf can uh, directly connect with our office to somebody who is fluent in ASL and receive resources and information in ASL. Uh, you can contact our video phone number at 646-396-5830. That's 646-396-5830. Or you can also visit nyc.gov slash ASL as in American Sign Language. That's nyc.gov slash ASL. And finally, we have our website full of resources, both um, for Blue Skies, as well as for um, COVID response, which we're going to be talking about more in depth in a few minutes. And that is nyc.gov slash disability. That's nyc.gov slash disability. So um, COVID has been something that has been going on, I think, 
has really ramped up uh, in the middle toward the beginning of March. And we have been having a lot of different conversations, as I mentioned, with the disability community, with um, individuals with disabilities, city agencies, et cetera. Uh, and uh, the first thing that we wanted to do, or we wanted to make sure that was happening, is that all of the resources that were being shared, both by our office and City Hall and the mayor's office, were accessible for people with disabilities. And we did this in a few ways. First, press conferences. The mayor, uh, mayor of New York City, Mayor de Blasio, has a daily press conference that he goes over every single day where he'll talk about the latest COVID updates and everything else. Um, for these press conferences, we have made sure that they include both American Sign Language as well as captioning. When we first started, the um, this is not new, at least for ASL, it's not new. The uh, Jonathan Lamberton, the captioner, fantastic human being that does a lot of really good work for the city in terms of interpreting, traditionally would just stand um, next to the mayor, whoever is speaking. But uh, when social distancing, uh, when those practices and protocols went into place, of course, he got smaller and smaller in the frame because the people were sitting six feet apart from each other and then he would need to be standing six feet apart from them. So um, the through a lot of work through emergency management and um, New York City media and uh, mayor's office of immigrant affairs, they have provided a lot of um, work into putting a picture in picture model in place in New York City. So now Jonathan does not even need to be in the building or the other interpreters uh, to include ASL. So that's something we're very happy with. The second is website and PDF accessibility for everything that health is putting out and other agencies. And for that, I'm gonna turn that over to Wale. Yep, and somebody requested that we type the phone numbers in the in the chat. I wrote, already wrote the yep. voice phone. So I will continue the, uh, doing that. Video? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so hi again, guys. My name is Wale Sabri. You can call me Wally. I am the digital accessibility coordinator for the city of New York and I will wait for one second because I live in a New York City apartment and the train is right above me and it's passing by. So I don't know if it's too loud right now. Sorry about that guys. So uh, my job is to assist uh, uh, New York City agencies in making their digital content accessible. That's our websites, our social media, our electronic documents, apps, videos, um, and anything else digital. Um, so uh, in this, in this uh, time uh, during the epidemic, I've been working closely with um, so agencies like the Department of Health, the Department of Information, Telecommunication and Technology, um, the Mayor's Office and Emergency Management and other um, agencies that are involved in the response. Mainly, uh, I've been uh, making sure that information about COVID-19 is available in accessible form. So we have the nyc.gov slash coronavirus page, which has been built uh, as a website to uh, inform New Yorkers about what's going on and how they can get assistance and what they should be doing. Um, so we have been uh, working with the uh, Department of Health on making that accessible since the beginning of March, and it has drastically improved since it first launched, um, you know, making sure that we have headings and alt text for images, and that the uh, structure of the page is accessible and easy to follow. Uh, also, you know, <clears throat> uh, tagging languages, that was a big thing because Everything we have to do has to be in um, multiple languages, available in multiple languages. So that's something we sort of uh, had to uh, address early on. There's also a ton of PDFs on that website, uh, which we have been once again guiding Department of Health and the vendors that uh, create uh, PDFs for them in ensuring that they have a process that is accessible, that creates accessible PDFs. And we've definitely come a long way since the first PDFs posted on that website. Um, once again, building in things like heading structures and um, you know proper heading tags, proper list tags, alt text for images, and, um, and making sure that the links work as well. And the reading order is um, the same for screen readers as it is visually. Um, so where we're at now is we are working on the coronavirus data pages. 
Uh, they're using data visualizations, um, which are great for conveying, uh, you know, information such as, you know, uh, numbers about the epidemic and and hospitals and cases and deaths and stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, they do pose a big issue for uh, screen reader accessibility. So we're working with uh, the developers uh, to make sure that that is going to be accessible. We're currently rolling out um, a new set of pages that uh, hopefully will uh, be much more accessible than the ones that are there. We're using a data visualization called Data Wrapper as well as one, uh, one data visualization in Tableau. So we are kind of just trying to push the uh, vendors as much as we can to ensure that the products that they create for us are accessible. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, more recent stuff that has rolled out, we rolled out a map uh, for distribution of face coverings. So the Parks Department has been uh, distributing face coverings for New Yorkers that need them. And the map is using an accessible template that the uh, Do It Do, um, Department of Information Telecom Technology and Telecommunication GIS team has created, and I've worked with them over the last few years to make this template accessible. So the uh, template is um, being used for this face coverings mask, and it provides text alternatives. So you can just uh, using a screen reader or a keyboard, enter in an address and get a list of results of the nearest locations where you can pick up uh, face coverings. Uh, another thing that we've worked on is the COVID-19 engagement portal uh, that is, uh, contains the tracker uh, for folks who want to identify themselves as having, having had symptoms or having had COVID uh, for the city to track numbers as well as it includes the delivery um, service that the city is using for uh, vulnerable populations to deliver food. So we early on, uh, or at least I early on, when it uh, first launched, identified some accessibility issues that were uh, keeping folks that are keyboard users and screen reader users from being able to use that effectively and reached out and we were able to fix the, those issues. Uh, so that's sort of uh, the work that we are doing in terms of digital accessibility and websites and PDFs. Uh, on the other hand, the city's also reaching out through social media. Um, so um, I've been working with, uh, or not really working with, but staying on top of city agencies on Twitter, uh, including the mayor's office, city of New York, Department of Health, Health and Hospitals, uh, emergency management, New York City Parks, um, and uh, folks like DOT to make sure that they are making their posts accessible by including alt text for the images that they use. Um, so uh, we've had a lot of success in getting them to do that and a lot of the posts that they've been putting out there in the last month or so have included alt text. Great, uh, this is John Novick. Well, I thank you so much for that information on websites and social media. So that's what we've been doing, um, at least as a baseline in terms of communications, press releases, websites and PDFs, resources and portals and social media. So all of this conversation that's happening, whether it's coming from our office or our city partners, we've been doing everything we can to ensure that it's accessible for folks who are blind, low vision, deaf, hard of hearing and other disabilities as well. Next is outreach. Um, you know, as we are, uh, while well, it's great to say that this content is accessible, but is it inclusive of people with, with disabilities? Is it addressing the need of people with disabilities? Um, so we've been doing a lot of outreach with the community as well. Um, we have a few sets of meetings. So first is a weekly meeting with disability advocates. Um, these are specifically the agencies that we work with um, regularly uh, during, you know, these blue skies scenarios. This is independent living centers, disability specific organizations like Lighthouse Guild or Hearing Loss Association of America, uh, as well as our um, private partners who uh, do a lot of work with us in terms of employing people with disabilities through our NYC at Work employment program. So we have a uh, a check-in meeting every week where we share the latest information. We have folks on the line regularly from Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, 
emergency management, HRA, and other agencies, you know, like guest agencies, based on what's going on. For example, last week we had um, on Friday somebody from the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection to talk a little bit about what's going on in terms of price gouging, where can you report it, as well as the COVID-19 economic impact payments and the, some finer points of what are the expectations, uh, if your level of income exceeds such and such, how could you, um, how could you exceed, or I'm sorry, how could you, um, when would you expect to do this or receive the payment or is there any additional action that you require? Um, and then we, you know, we take all that information and we also try and have an open discussion. Uh, you know, after our updates, we listen to what's going on in the community, what resources are working, what resources are not working, or just individuals that say, I specifically need something. And then we try and connect with them offline to provide them with the support that they need. Um, next, uh, the next reoccurring meeting that we have is with our disability service facilitators. So for those of you who are not aware, um, as a result of a local law that was passed in 2016, every city agency is required to have uh, what is known as a disability service facilitator. This is a point of contact within a city agency to um, both be community facing for questions and concerns, as well as to work with us to um, understand best practices in terms of accessibility and work to ensure that their agency is within compliance. Now, if you're interested in learning more about disability service facilitators, you can visit uh, the disability service facilitator website, nyc.gov slash DSF. That's nyc.gov slash DSF as in disability service facilitator, which will talk more about the law as well as provide a full set of contact information for each individual city agency. So let's say you have a question for a disability specific question or concern for human rights or HRA or emergency management or other city agencies that I mentioned, there is a DSF for that. Now with that background, we're also checking in weekly with our disability service facilitators as well to talk about you know, what we're doing and what we're seeing, what the issues are, and to understand what's coming down the pipeline for them. What are the programs they're working with and what are concerns do they have for people with disabilities and how can we work to address those? Um, and then finally, more specifically, we um, recently on Thursday, on um, April 30th, we held uh, our first, uh, but not our last, Deaf Town Hall, which was a learning experience. The idea was to hold a uh, a one hour, you know, uh, to take in questions from the community and try and address as many as possible. We provided some updates of information on what the city was working on. Um, and we had ASL and captioning. Unfortunately, we ran into a technical glitch, which was that we started in Zoom, you know, just like we are now. And we um, basically exported the, the live Zoom into Facebook Live and unfortunately discovered that the captioning um, was very difficult to read, was delayed, and it was at no fault of our captioner. It was because of the, the technical glitches. So that's something that we're going to be working on to try and perfect so we can continue to have conversations within the deaf and hard of hearing community. So um, something we recognize and we're going to learn from and, you know, move forward. But with all of these, with all of these touch points, working with people with disabilities, working with our disability service facilitators, working with um, folks who are deaf, hard of hearing, and everything that we're hearing, we wanted to put together a location, uh, a place that we can share disability-specific information, and that is um, our coronavirus website, specifically for people with disabilities. I shared the link earlier. I see a lot happening in the chat. Wale, if you could share it. Um, type out the link, it's nyc.gov slash disability dash coronavirus. That's nyc.gov slash disability dash coronavirus. And that has information and resources based off of the needs that we were hearing within the disability community. So right up top, we have um, food supply, uh, food and supplies delivery and pickup for people with disabilities who are unable to leave their home, who are concerned about their immune systems being compromised for one reason or another. Um, maybe they're okay with leaving their home, but are concerned about going into stores. So we have information like um, various uh, city resources that uh, New York City has put together, including uh, NYC, um, nyc.gov slash get food, 
That's nyc.gov slash get food. These are resources that um, there's a food map that talks about various locations you can pick up food, which includes the Department of Education's um, over 400 locations where any person you do not have to be a student can actually pick up food for people with disabilities. There is a food delivery assistance program that you can subscribe to if you qualify. Um, this is specifically a program that is for people who are um, fall under three categories. First, you, for one reason or another, cannot leave your home, whether it be physical barriers or um, concerns of your immune system being compromised. Two, you don't have anyone who can assist you. For example, in going to pick up these food, um, in going to these food pickup locations. Or, um, and three, you cannot afford delivery. Um, you cannot afford food delivery for, um, you know, for services like uh, DoorDash or Grubhub or other 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 food uh, service. So if you qualify for all three of these, you can apply for this program. And this can either be done online at nyc.gov slash get food. You can call 311. And you can also text 311-692. 692 um, uh, spells out NYC if it helps you remember. So it's um, calling 311, texting 311 692, or visiting nyc.gov slash get food. Um, so, th those are some food resources that we have on our website. In addition, um, we also have information on home health care providers. So, for individuals who are concerned about losing care or um, for one reason or another have lost their care and need to find someone new, we have resources on that. We also have mental health resources because this is a you know a difficult time. It's uh, certainly a stressful time. Certainly a, a time that uh, a lot of conversation is taking place is around coronavirus and having someone to talk to can make a world of difference. So there's um, services like NYC Well, which is the city's free. 24 seven confidential counseling service. We also have a number of deaf specific counseling services where folks can receive counseling in American sign language virtually. Um, so those are just a few of those of the many resources that we have on our site. This is something that we regularly update to ensure that, you know, we are serving as a, as a place where people with disabilities can go that is reactive to the conversations that are happening. And once again, that's nyc.gov slash disability dash coronavirus. Uh, while I do want to talk a little bit about the, the site itself, the accessibility of it, as well as the... Um, yep. Yeah, um, we'll just take so uh, well, as always, uh, we wanted to ensure that our information about access accessibility is accessible uh, to people with disabilities. So we are um, using our, you know, um, Sorry, I keep hearing the screen reader in my ear. So uh, the website is accessible. Um, it uses uh, accordions uh, to for each of the sections, so food and, and mental health. You just kind of uh, expand each accordion, and it works with keyboards. It works with screen readers. Um, and on top of that, and when we found, you know, as we explore this new sort of uh, situation more, we realize that we need to build out even more resources for people to, um, you know, have accessible virtual meetings. So we did create a guide on how to make your virtual meetings accessible, and that is on our digital accessibility resources page, which is nyc.gov slash digital access. One more time, nyc.gov slash digital access. And back to John. Oh, you can also actually uh, just uh, download our other guides there. You can see our digital accessibility report. Um, our other guides include a documents accessibility guide, a uh, slides accessibility guide, as well as a social media accessibility guide. I'm trying to keep an even pace of when one of us says a link, the other one puts it in the chat because I know we're, we're sharing a lot of information. Uh, let me see here. So please hold on one second. Okay, so uh, I just shared the digital accessibility guide, um, or the guides rather, and underneath is the accessible virtual meetings guide. Uh, Wally, you spoke on that already? 
Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Great. And Thank you. Once again, everything you can find our digital accessibility resources through nyc.gov slash digital access. Mm -hmm. But we haven't, uh, so this is John, we, so, but we haven't just been, you know, sharing resources and updating websites and that's it. An additional issue that we constantly were hearing within the disability community is lack of access to PPEs, which I'm sure uh, no one on the chat is a stranger to PPEs at this point. Um, and the, the need for them across various communities. PPEs is an acronym. It stands for Personal Protective Equipment. These are masks, these are gloves, these are face shields. And at the beginning of COVID, especially um, within the first few weeks where um, the mayor started putting in social distancing practices, there was a, a very large demand for masks, for gloves, and specifically going to our you know, our first responders, the hardworking doctors and nurses and, and physician assistants in hospitals that are treating people with COVID, of course, they need these resources. But what we were also hearing is that another group of people that, that certainly need these resources are people with disabilities, uh, specifically the home health care providers that work with them. These are individuals that are in and out of an individual's home to um, work with them various levels and help them being independent. Um, some require you know, uh, nurses or to provide more um, intravenous medical treatment, whereas others are um, you know, still assisting, but in other ways. But regardless, um, there was a concern that you know, these individuals needed PPEs or else they might not be you know, continuing to work in their job. So what we were able to do is fortunately we worked with um, some city agency partners and we were able to actually get a collection of masks, uh, non-medical grade masks. We couldn't get you know, N95s, but non-medical grade masks that still made a difference and gloves and distributed them across the city to our partners, um, to independent living centers, to other um, either day have facilities or residential programs based on who reached out to us, and we're still trying to do that. At the moment, we have distributed um, nearly 100,000 masks and gloves um, to combine, so about 50,000 of each across the city, and we're still working to do this. Um, we're still trying the best we can to connect people, either directly through um, the work that we do, um, going to individuals' homes or going to these programs to provide, or by connecting them with individuals that that can. Um, so that's a little bit more information on PPEs. Uh, but, you know, the conversation continues. Um, this is something that we um, we're still we're still here. We're still meeting every single week. We're still updating our resources and trying to help out in all the ways that we can. Um, but an interesting conversation that has come up is what does the future look like in terms of post COVID? Um, specifically, um, when I say, what does the future look like? I mean, this um, opportunity or this um, real cultural awakening to the fact that virtual meetings can exist can have a very positive impact for people with disabilities um, in, in various ways. So for example, let's talk about employment, right? Um, for people with disabilities, a reasonable accommodation, depending on your disability, might be working from home or might be working remotely. And um, we have an employment program, it's called NYC at Work. It's a public-private partnership where we connect people with disabilities to um, to jobs, to our various um, businesses that we work with that are interested in hiring people with disabilities. And as we negotiate, you know, as we work with individuals, as we work with businesses, we would find barriers in terms of working from home. A lot of HR departments, for whatever reason, were not comfortable with individuals working remotely, working from home. But now it seems that that's what everybody's doing. You know, now with this change of pace, um, as society, as we've all needed to stay home, as we need to adhere to social distancing, working from home is no longer this far-fetched thing. We're all doing it. So we hope that, you know, in future conversations post-COVID, we can continue to advocate for this level of accommodation, but not only in the workplace, but in other ways as well. Um, for education, for example, having distance learning, having individuals with disabilities or folks who might not travel as well to be able to learn remotely if that's something that they require, but also from a recreational standpoint. And Wale has been working um, a fair amount in that department. Uh, Wale, do you want to talk about that? Sorry, I was, uh, can you uh, respond in the chat? I don't know if I was yeah, able to respond. Uh, sure, but, sure. Okay. Um, 
And you're talking about the activities, right? Yes. Okay. So um, we also realize that folks need to be able to do things from home that are accessible. So we're currently putting together a at-home activities guide, uh, accessible things to do. That includes things like um, live virtual meetings, whether they are tech lessons from the Andrew High Scale Library or exercising with in tandem, um, but also uh, live uh, virtual uh, verbal description tours at museums like the Whitney, the Guggenheim um, and other museums, as well as recorded things that you can do on your own time anytime. Uh, same kind of deal of uh, verbal description tours at museums, even some podcasts that have recorded uh, audio dramatizations and theater uh, performances, as well as audio, uh, accessible audio workouts, well, actually video or audio workouts for folks who are blind or for folks who have limited mobility. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We'll hopefully be putting that out very soon. Great, thank you, Wale. Um, so uh, technology provides us a unique opportunity to do, to have conversations like this while I sitting in his, in his living room, I'm sitting in, in my bedroom. You're all, I'm sure in the comfort of your own homes. Uh, and, and that's a great thing. And, and through technology, hopefully we can use this, uh, and maybe take this momentum to continue to expand, um, access to information, to employment, to recreation, to everything. Um, and we hope that we can really capitalize on that as we move forward. But beyond, um, beyond, you know, the 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 silver lining of of what has have been happening, the question becomes: Where do we go from here? You know, what recovery efforts should be taking place for people with disabilities? And in the same way as we think about the resources that are available, how can we make them accessible to people with disabilities? How can we be cognizant of their needs? And that's the conversation we've started having with our advocates as well. Um, actually, just today, we, we closed um, this survey that we have been putting out with our partners that asks people, that solicits this feedback, um, that talks about from a, a COVID standpoint, what has been working? What are the resources that you think were successful? And of those, what needs to continue? As we are thinking about COVID response, as we're thinking about where do we go from here and resources that uh, people and people with disabilities are going to need access to, what does that look like? What does accessible, inclusive recovery look like? So we actually received uh, nearly 200 responses and we are working our way through those answers. but. Um, we uh, really want to stay engaged. We want to have a constant dialogue with the disability community. So as we continue to move through COVID response and after COVID, as we continue on um, you know, doing everything that we um, are going to continue doing, how can we you know, take this opportunity to ensure people with disabilities are represented? And with that, um, that unless Wally, you have anything else you want to add, that's pretty much our our presentation. Um, so yep. we'd be Just happy the to. One. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Last thing is ADA 30. Uh, we're planning some, a slew of events for you guys or the disability community in the summer. Um, given that we don't know whether quarantine, you know, will be over in July or not. Um, we have decided to just go ahead and make everything virtual. So to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, we'll be putting on a whole, a whole bunch of events with um, community partners, uh, including you know, performances, music, advocacy workshops, employment workshops, digital accessibility workshops. Um, and the, anything else that I haven't thought of? Uh, no, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of really cool work. We're working with RP on site. They're doing a lot of great work, um, positive exposures, doing a fantastic job. And a lot of organizations who are, you know, want to celebrate disability pride and want to uh, really make ADA 30 this, this large celebration. And we look forward to continuing to work with them and amplify the work that they are doing. So we don't have a website up for it yet, but do follow us um, on our, our website, nyc.gov disability or our social media which is uh, Twitter is at NYC disabilities, plural. Um, and 
Our Facebook is what? Facebook.com. No, nope, it's actually the same oh. thing. Uh, Facebook.com yes. slash NYC disabilities. But you can also look us up at New York City Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities. That is New York City Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities. And is our Instagram uh, pretty? It exists. Uh, we it exists. use. We've been using uh, Facebook and Twitter for this information sharing period. We still have been posting to it, but that is something you can also follow us on. Uh, we will perfect our Instagram, uh, our Instagram presence as we, you know, continue to move on into the 2020 year. Uh, but that is also at NYC Disabilities. Um, but you can once again just search NYC Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities. Uh, and all right, I up? think that's it for us. Okay, uh, we great. can open so, it up for questions. Sure, Thomas, we're going to turn it back over to you to you know sure. lead us through. Yeah. So, um, hi everyone. I'm going to ask a couple questions that I have from the chat, but um, feel free to uh, ask your own question if you want. Turn on your camera, unmute yourself, and you can ask it, or you can uh, type into the chat. But um, one of the questions we had. Um, during the presentation was from Carmen, I think, uh, just to emphasize again, how do, how do we, what's the contact for the free mask and gloves? Um, for so we're, we're currently standardizing that process. It initially mm -hmm. started as a response to the folks that we were working with. We had sent out a survey form and that survey form uh, became populated. We didn't want to overextend ourselves. Um, so at the moment, I will say, uh, hold on one second. I'm going to share a contact form that's in our website that you can use to direct PPE. As well requests. as you can, yep. As well as you can call us at 212 788 2830. I was about to give my number. Uh, 2830. Um, or get in touch with us through 311. Like I said, or like John said, you can use our contact form to get in touch with us that way. Correct. I'm still muted. Okay. Uh, so I'm putting this in the chat right now. It's the MOPD COVID feedback form. The link I'm putting is a pretty long link, but this is available on our website at nyc.gov slash disability dash coronavirus at the very top. We just do like a little introductory paragraph and explain these are the ways you can get in contact with us. And then one of them is the form. I just shared the direct link to the form in the site. But for now, direct all questions, all comments, really, that you don't get to ask during this chat there. But that also includes, you know, PPE requests. And we'll do the best we can to um, provide or connect you with someone who can. Um, we're still ramping up our efforts, uh, but we will do Thomas, uh, next question through the chat. Okay. Yeah, so the next one we have, uh, what was the counseling service website again? So I guess just a request for the resource to the- um, Sure, let the me provide an anchor link. Give me one second. So we have mental health resources on our site. We cited a few of them. Uh, one of them is NYC Well. NYC Well is free 24 seven confidential counseling service. Um, for any New Yorker, specifically uh, individuals within the five boroughs. Um, so first I'm sharing, this is an anchor link to the mental health resources on our COVID site. So if you click that, that'll go straight down. But for those of you joining us on YouTube, if you visit nyc.gov slash disability dash coronavirus, you'll see a few accordion links, um, food and resources, et cetera. Toward the bottom, mental health resources, if you expand that, you will receive information on NYC Well, which is the free 24 seven confidential counseling service, as well as what else do we have there? You know the phone, off, phone number off the top of your hand? Uh, uh, I do because I'm looking at it. It is 1-888-692-9355. I'm gonna type this out. Um, free 24 seven confidential counseling service. So it's 1-888-692-9355. Once that, again, one, that stands for NYC Well. So one it does. I was gonna, yep. NYC Well, sorry. No, that's okay. I was gonna get there. Yeah, that was my reveal. <laughs> so 1-888-692-8355 or 1-888-NYC Well. You can also text well 
to 65173. And you can also chat online at nyc.gov slash nyc well. Some additional resources. Once again, I shared the link, so I'm not going to go through all of these because we'll be here for a while and I've shared the link to where you can see them. We have the Lighthouse Guilds Behavioral Healthcare Program. So this is uh, a telehealth program that is available through telephone and video calling. Um, this is especially for folks, but not exclusively um, for individuals who are um, you know, at risk of vision loss, um, but it's not exclusively for folks who are blind or low vision. This is um, you know, a, a healthcare uh, service that can assist anyone. Uh, we have Lexington Center for Mental Health Services. These are for individuals who, you know, for, for somebody who is deaf or hard of hearing, prefer counseling in ASL, that is available. Um, we have a few, and yeah, we have a lot of um, guides as well. At the very bottom of the mental health site uh, section of our website, we have um, some PDFs, some documents from USA Mental Health First Aid, how to care for yourself while practicing physical distancing. How do I know someone is experiencing anxiety or depression? How to help someone with anxiety or depression during COVID-19? And how to support a loved one going through a tough time during COVID-19. So these hands-on resources and guidance materials are all available on our website under mental health resources. You can visit nyc.gov slash disability dash coronavirus. Sorry, nyc.gov slash disability dash coronavirus. Um, okay. Okay, um, so I had a question on the, uh, the deaf town hall. You mentioned, I was cool. curious uh, if there's any best practices or even just how you set up um, like an ASL interpreter in a meeting like this or how, how that works or if there's any lessons learned from that. Sure. Uh, while I, do you want to talk about the, the do you want to, do we want to go through the virtual meeting guide more extensively or do you want me to take this? I feel like I have a good start. Let me, let me, let me start and then you focus. Okay. So, um, Let's talk first from an accessibility perspective um, in, a, in a web conference. If you are just going to have a, an accessible meeting, first, make sure your web platform is accessible. Uh, while I do want to talk a little bit about the, the platforms or the various platforms that you think. Yeah, I mean, I think we're familiar with uh, Zoom. Zoom is pretty accessible. Um, Google Hangouts Meet has accessibility and supports captions. Teams we were talking about in the beginning of the meeting, so I'm not going to mention anything about that. Um, unfortunately, the city has a tendency to use WebEx, which I'm not a big fan of. But uh, just make sure that you're you're using an accessible platform. If you are stuck to using something like WebEx, you know, be sure to provide alternatives such as um, you know a phone number to dial in for folks maybe who have who might have trouble accessing that platform with a screen reader. And then um, from from that, once you pick your platform, of course, you need to advertise this meeting. So in that case, you need to, much like you would in the physical space, make sure that you know your your meeting is having a your your advertisement includes information on accessibility. Will there be an ASL interpreter? Will there be live captioning? Will there be audio description? And um, if there's none of these things as a starting line, at least have a point of contact and a deadline for someone to request these. So um, Wale is holding a Zoom meeting and it's happening next week, but I know I can contact him if I need ASL, if I need um, you know, captioning. And we advise that you include two, of course, um, because everyone has their preferences based on either disability or otherwise, two points of communication, a phone number and an email address because someone might have more comfort with one over another. And um, I said this, but just expressing a deadline. Um, make sure there's a deadline for someone to request accommodations because it's going to be very difficult to secure a captioner or an ASL interpreter the day before an event or the morning of an event. Now you got your captioner, you got your ASL interpreter. That's great. Um, when it comes to captioning, uh, I would say that um, it's good to get a general sense of you know how captioning should interface with your program. But when you are having this conversation, when you are procuring your captioner, have that conversation then. I'm having a Zoom meeting. Are you comfortable captioning Zoom? Great. What do you need from me? How can we make this a success? How much time should we meet up beforehand? Because, you know, in the, it's the, the more technology involved, the more time you're going to want to make for yourself to ensure that you can troubleshoot the issues. Um, 
So then, you know, have that caching available, that's good. And then American Sign Language, um, which is a lot less complicated, I would say. For somebody who is using American Sign Language, if it's a video call, just forward them the information. Uh, and then they can join the video call, same as you. But you might um, want to, or it's recommended that you provide some additional insight to users who might require ASL. For example, um, the ASL interpreter isn't going to be speaking, they're going to be signing. And because of that, they might not be highlighted the whole time. So instructions for how to view ASL exclusively, how to pin somebody, an ASL interpreter, to the top of the screen so they never get lost in the shuffle of various people chiming in. And finally, access checks. You know, all of these things are great, but when there's 30 people joined in a call, it can be difficult to isolate the ASL interpreter or a captioner. So just make sure that you call attention to these things, and you might need to provide additional instruction on how to access each of them. Cool, thank you. Uh, all right, so another question um, came in. Can you comment on the potential healthcare rationing in New York City or in general for people with disabilities due to the ongoing pandemic, um, people having their backup respirators requested, et cetera? Sure. So. That is a, you know, it's a, it's a very real fear. This is a conversation that we have had that, you know, a person during a global pandemic that a person with a disability or a medical professional would ration healthcare away from a person with disability to somebody that is, you know, seemingly without disability. Thankfully, we have not heard specific instances within New York City. I will say a few things. First, the Office of Civil Rights at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services um, has recently issued a bulletin that reaffirms civil rights protections and provisions of healthcare services related to COVID-19. This was right when this started. This was something that was immediately put out to say that, you know, this is, this is not right. You cannot do this. Um, you know, people with disabilities, they have these protections. Secondly, um, this is actually last week. Um, the Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights, Eric S. Dryband, came out last week and said discrimination based on rec, oh, sorry, race, sex, religion, national origin, disability, and other protected classes continues to be unlawful during this public health emergency. So when we look up to these, you know, to these lawmakers, to these civil rights um, individuals, there is a resounding, this is unlawful, this is against civil rights, you cannot do this. But, you know, fears are still fears. We've been in contact with New York City human rights as well as state human rights. They've actually both been on our weekly call. And we're encouraging folks that if you do uh, experience some form of discrimination to reach out to human rights, to reach out to city human rights, reach out to state um, state human rights, um, et cetera. And I can share that information. I don't have that off the top of my head, but basically it's something we're aware of at the moment. You know, civil rights folks are, are saying a lot to say that that's just unconstitutional, that is unlawful. Um, and we are um, very thankful for that. And of course, I mean, I, I, duh, I guess is, is my, is my, is my next um, thing to say, but um, reach out if you do as an action item, if you do experience discrimination or somebody, friend or family member experiences discrimination, reach out to human rights, state office, local office, reach out to our office. Um, and we'll go from there. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. A uh, question from uh, Aurelia Kare. Uh, can you please explain what the problem is with WebEx so I can explain that to my job? So I think for the, the floor is yours. <laughs> is How much time do we have? <laughs> no, um, for my own experience with it as a blind person using a screen reader, uh, it just it's a very confusing platform to navigate. Um, when I try to join the link, it takes me to a page. There's a join link on on that page. I guess it pops up with a modal that is not accessible. There's just a whole bunch of issues. It's mainly for me as a screen reader user, I have trouble using it and navigating it um, when compared to platforms like Zoom, which just work. By caregivers, do you mean personal care attendants and those kind of uh, folks who serve in that way? Uh, John, you wanna say that one or should I take a first step? Sure. Down? Okay. Um, so one thing that's been happening, as I mentioned before, is that um, due to lack of PPE, there's a, a concern in certain cases folks are 
uh, concerned uh, for their own health and not showing up to work. Uh, we have been trying to, New York City has been trying to, you know, connect these individuals, these, these service providers with masks and gloves to address this. That's the first thing. But um, beyond that, I'm not sure of other barriers that have been arising, Wale. Uh, but we, I'll, I'll say that, you know, we are up, we are constantly within conversation and opening our lines to anybody who is experiencing issues with home health care providers, with home health aides. Um, if you, Sorry about that. If you okay. are some oh. need of home health care uh, and for one reason or another you're unable to receive service, please reach out to our office. You can call us at 212-788-2830. That's 212-788-2830. You can um, visit our website, nyc.gov slash disability dash coronavirus for additional home health care services. Um, and you can also you know, connect with us via video phone if you are a person who is deaf and prefers to communicate in ASL at uh, 646-396-5830. Thank you. Sorry, can you hear me? I had trouble unmuting before. Uh, yeah, no, I heard you. Okay, cool. Uh, Wale, this is another question from the chat. Question from a friend. Could you comment on ongoing difficulties for those who are low vision and blind when applying for unemployment, specifically for those who don't use computers? Sure. Um, we have had a lot of complaints uh, about the Department of Labor, the State Department of Labor, and getting through to them on the phones. Um, we don't necessarily have any quick fixes for that. Uh, unfortunately, we are not like part of the state government. So what we recommend is maybe if, if you are having issues getting through to reach out to um, uh, any entities that you can complain about them. So maybe the state division on human rights could be helpful in that sense. Um, like, like I said, as a city entity, we don't have any sort of sway with, with the state government. I will say that there is one, one um, financial resource that we can talk about. It, it's separate from unemployment, but just um, while we're on this topic, uh, our office has been working with the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection to roll out a program. We've had it for about a year now. It's called Empowered NYC. Empowered NYC is free financial counseling for people with disabilities in New York City. So um, this is a program that due to COVID has moved online. The services have moved online, no longer in-person meetings, but um, you can visit nyc.gov slash empowered NYC. That's nyc.gov slash empowered NYC. And this is a service that can assist you in um, you know, planning financially for your future and you know, making a budget and other things like that. Um, let's see, uh, I'm just looking for a phone number as well. I believe you should be able to just either call 311 and ask about Empowered NYC or text 311-692. That's, you know, text 311-692 to ask about Empowered NYC. Uh, I'm, sh I'm looking for a specific number and I'm having trouble finding it. Uh, but that is that in addition, um, and once again, this is not unemployment as well. I said, that's through the, the state department of labor, but, um, additional financial resources that you can look into are through access HRA as a result of COVID. Once again, they have moved a lot of their, or actually uh, the services that traditionally you might need to apply for in person, cash assistance, supp uh, supplemental nutrition assistance program. You can apply for all of those now online uh, at nyc.gov slash access HRA. That's nyc.gov uh, slash access HRA testing that to make sure and yes i'm right so i'm going to share that in the chat uh so those are some additional resources also i want to put it out there it's not just uh people who are blind or have low vision that have had trouble getting in touch with the department of labor uh any folks that try to call in have had that issue so it might be worth uh connecting with other communities that are having this issue to advocate together. 